Okay, today I'm going to share Chapter 1 of the Biological Psychology, James W. Kellat, 13th edition. So Chapter 1, Nerve Cells and Nerve Impulses. These will be really easy and fast for you to learn. The cells of the nervous system. Your mental experiences depend on the activity of a huge number of separate but interconnected cells. We can begin to understand how this works by looking at the cells of a nervous system. You got your sensory inputs, your integration, and your motor output. So how does this work? Well, a lot of this works with uh, neurons and your glia. Glia protect your neurons in your brain. So the human nervous system comprises of two kinds of cells. The neurons, they transmit information to other nerve cells. And glia maintain homeostasis, form melanin, and provide protection and support for neurons. They do a lot of different things. A little bit more explanation. The human brain contains approximately 100 billion individual neurons. It makes a good portion of the brain. How many neurons do we have? The cerebral cortex, like I said, 12 to 15 billion neurons. So that's a good uh, chunk of mass in the uh, in the in, of the brain itself. The cerebellum, which is 70 billion neurons, and the spinal cord, which goes all the way down. It's got some time to travel. Through the brainstem. Okay. Uh, here is the innovator, Santiago Ramon y Cajal, a pioneer neuro neuroscientist. He's the one who actually proved a lot of what needed to be proved uh, in the uh, 19th century. Uh, he was the first to demonstrate that the individual cells comprising the nervous system remain separate. He believed that they did not merge into each other as previously believed. So, brain's really complicated, has different stages, but he got a microscope and he stained one of the, one of the uh, parts of the cell and basically proved that they all work uh, separately. The structures of an animal cell. This is uh, where we start usually use animals because they're easy, uh, very similar to humans. Um, the other cells in the body, neurons contain the following structures. The membrane, the nucleus, the mitochondria, the ribosomes, the endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, the membrane separates inside of a cell to the outside. So it's like a, a thin sheet or layer of cells acting as a boundary lining or the portion of a organism. So it's on the outside, keeps things safe. It looks like this layer there. The nucleus, that's circular, looks like this, it's called pores, it's a circle. A dense uh, organelle presents in, in most eukaryotic cells, typically a single rounded structure bounded by a double membrane, you see the double membrane here. Uh, it's responsible for chrome, uh, chromosomes and DNA. Uh, the mitochondria generates energy production, essential for energy production. Um, aerobic um, activity, um, metabolic activity. The ribosomes, um, they synthesize new proteins and they, they transfer them um, and synthesize the poly, uh, polypeptides and proteins. They build proteins essentially. And then the endoplasmic rectum, just remember this section here, this is like a journey right it uh it transports uh, newly synthesized proteins that were made by ribosome so here we go so here we go in more detail an electric uh, micrograph of the parts of a neuron first you have the nucleus membrane includes region it contains your DNA your chromosomes um, circular like I said it's got two sections the ribosomes um, they isolate modify transport of proteins and other substances and then you've got your mitochondria which is aerobic, uh, aer aerobic energy metabolism and then your uh, plasma membrane uh, this controls of material exchanges and mediation of cell environment interaction inside here. Oh, this is a very complicated illustration. Not in color. The structures of an animal cell. 
Okay, so the membrane separates the inside of the cell from the outside. Look like an outer layer. The nucleus contains the chromosomes. The mitochondria performs the metabolic activity and provides energy. Kind of like aerobics, right? Mitochondria, energy, nucleus, chromosomes, membrane separates it's like the shell. Ribosomes, uh, okay, the, uh, the ribosomes, uh, they synthesize new proteins in the endoplasmic rectum, networks of thin tubes that transport newly synthesized proteins to the location. So here's the big illustration here. Um, neuron cells are similar to other cells of the body and have a distinctive shape. There's a lot of different shapes that can come in. Here's one neuron right here. They're electrically charged. Um, a motor neuron, um, obviously motor functions, sensory for sensory functions. Uh, the motor neuron has its soma in the spinal cord. Obviously, if you damage your spinal cord, you can't really move. Um, receives uh, excitation from other neurons. Conducts impulses along its axons to muscles. And the sensory neuron is spe uh, specialized at one end to be highly sensitive to a particular type of stimulation. Touch, light, sound, your sensory information. Tips your hands. Here's a picture of the motor neuron. You got your dendrites, which are also dendrite spines. Your nucleus, which is surrounded by the soma that sends your charges at the end of the axon hillock down here, down the axon. And it's protected by the myelin sheath. These protect it. And then you have your muscle fiber, which your presynaptic terminals make contact with. Dendrite, dendrite spines. So they communicate. Soma, nucleus, axons, which are very long, which have the myelin sheath, and then make contact by pot. These pods here, which are the presynaptic terminals to your muscle fibers. Here's your uh, sensory neuron, which is a different design. You got your axon, your soma, and nucleus are all in one. Here's your skin. Sensory endings end up in the skin. And then there's different layers of skin here. Components of all neurons. There's the dendrites, the soma cell body, the axon, the presynaptic terminals. Dendrites. Those are the branchy fibers uh, with a surface lined with synaptic receptors responsible for bringing information into the neuron. Some also contain dendrite spines that further branch out super long and increase the surface area of the dendrite. The greater uh, the greater the surface area of the dendrite, the more information it can receive. So if you got a lot of dendrites, you got a lot of motor functions. Super athlete. Dendrite spines. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get a pen and put this in. All right, the cell body of the soma contains a nucleus, the mitochondria, and the ribosomes, responsible for the metabolic. Met uh, meta metabolic form uh, of work of the neuron covered with synapses on its surface in many neurons. Axons, thin, fi thin fiber of a neuron responsible for transmitting nerve impulses so through here to the axon. Um, other neurons, organs, and muscles uh, maybe have a myelin sheath like the ones that protect here an insulating material that contains uh, interruptions in the sheath known as nodes of Ren Renvier. So there are little openings here on the sheath. Presynaptic terminals at the end points of the axon release chemicals to communicate with the neurons. Afferent, efferent, and intrinsic. So there's the afferent axon that brings the information into a structure. Arrival, A, arrival, brings 
into the structure, arrive, and an exit. Efferent, E for exit. Efferent accent refers to carrying away from a structure. So E, exit, efferent, A, arrival, efferent accent. Interneurons or intrinsic neurons are those whose dendrites and accents are completely contained within a single structure. Let's do that again. Interneurons or intrinsic. There's two different terms here. Interneuron, intrinsic neuron, whose dendrites and accents are completely contained within a single structure. Okay. Here's a cell structure and axon. Afferent, exiting, afferent, arrival. Okay. Alright, thank you so much for watching. Uh, hit subscribe and I'll get straight to part two.